Welcome to Toss Around Tuesdays. <laughs> How good is this? <laughs> Begging moment before we crack on. We smash the buttons for us, uh, like and subscribe, because when we did the business video, didn't we? Yeah. When we were chatting about how terrible it was to run your own business, uh, we did a little chat about subs about subscriptions, and they they did jump up a lot. So I don't know whether it's because we not remind you, but whether we say about it, it is massively helpful. It is massively helpful um, and it allows us to go off and do cool things, I suppose, doesn't it really? Like yeah. be involved with... It's hard to quantify exactly what it does, Yeah, but it, it's a big, big help. It's not, it's not, I don't want to sit here and say it's a, it's a money thing because we've said this before. We're, it's upside down anyway, isn't it? What yeah. YouTube, yeah. it's not about that. But if all of a sudden you've got some a bit of a following, it just opens doors to things, to going to see people, yeah. to being invited in to do cool things. You all right with that? Very Anything to add? No. You Feels a bit beggy. Begging, begging you. Now on with the fun. <laughs> Davla. Hello, sir. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure always. It's emotional. Yes. What's going on then? Well, it's update time. It is update time. Question time. Oh yeah, Kate's not here this week, so I've had to do it all myself. Yep. Place falls apart when she's not here. Mate. I know, and then I get shouted at when she is here, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, no matter what I do. You can't win. <laughs> no, can't win. Uh, where the hell do we start? Let's start here. Uh, so this is in for a vehicle check over and a few little complaints, like the brakes feel a bit not as effective and it pulls the geometries all over the place. So it is lovely. I think from the side of the brakes and stuff like that, he's got out of a, um, I'm sure he said it was like an M4. So yep. brakes are just rubbish on them yep. in comparison. Uh, but we'll go over it. We'll check it over. We'll make sure it's mint. We'll wait for the lorry to pass. We'll turn my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> Still love that colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lambo's in yellow. It's yeah. mint, isn't it? Feel like I'd be DMX out of a Jet Li film or something. <laughs> uh, so we'll go over that. We'll make sure that's all right. Uh, George's is off the ramp. It's all back together. It's running a month. Uh, we have got to sort out his side airbag. And I think that's it. That's it done then. It can go. So that has had everything. So if you want an RS6 Avant, Give George a shout, because he wants to sell it. Happy days. We've done everything. Oil pump seals, Cambridge seals, uh, rocker cover seals, coolant pipes, everything. Everything, 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 everything. It's had brake poses. So yeah, it is cool. Not bored of RS6s at all. R8OPO. Uh, that is, uh, that's in for service. I'm sure that is Robert's car. Yep. Uh, so that's in for service. I don't think he's got any other faults with that, but we'll get on with that this week. We'll see what's going on with it. Give an inspection feedback. If he does need anything, the McLaren is about to have the engine taken out. Uh, we've got replacement oil pump, replacement water pump to go on it. PCV valve to go on it. Um, but that's, that's lovely, that thing. And then we'll uh, put a map on it for him. Engine out? Yeah, yeah, sort out a few little uh, oil leaks and bits and pieces or, and change the pump. So yeah, it'll be all right. So that's got uh, a Krapovic. Yes. Nice. Yeah, it sounds lovely, it sounds lovely. Um, completely forgotten what this one's in for. This is in for service and a list. Oh, no, no, that's Robert's, that's Tins. Ah, okay. Yeah, I remember. Uh, Tins is in for, yeah, service and a list, uh, fi little fixings, fittings, air guides, that sort of thing that we found last time we had the car in. Yep. And then Robert's is in for a list of problems and a service, so that's okay. 
Um, Tosh's is coming in this week to have the engine out. That's the misfire one. I spent Thursday night, I was here till midnight, and I started again before I committed to pulling the engine out to him. Uh, I was here till midnight and I literally ignored everything anybody had ever done on the car, started again, scoped everything, compared it to the other cylinders, and yeah, electronically that car's mint, so it's, it's engine out. I'm convinced it's a valve spring, but I don't know, had a camera down it, everything. Yeah. Everything! One of those jobs. One of those jobs, mate. Affles is serviced. Uh, MOT'd, I'm ready to go, that's going this afternoon. The mix, we're waiting on a few engine parts to turn up and then we can pull the motor out. Um, and we got, that's the liner block we showed the other week, that's going in that. So we've got um, Italian rods and pistons, a valve train, and then we just need to pull it to bits and fix it, get the work done. Cool. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, we've got bits on order for Allen's. Um, John's uh, waiting on seat belt and a window seal, and then we can put that back together. Uh, and then you can have that back. That's just, we've done the majority of it. It's just last few little bits and pieces. Waiting on engine parts for mats. And that's about it done that way, I think. Yeah. What you got, George? A mat. Mat. Mats. That's that next room. Oh. Oh, we've got a fluffy mic. What have you got? What have you got in, George? Talk to my bosom. What have you got in? Did you go there or not? Hmm. <laughs> X5. It's alright, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of care. X5 or RSQ8? Is this an RXQ8 size? Nah, it's bigger, isn't it? RSQ8 is bigger than this. Is it? Looks alright, doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got like a weird crystal gear knob. Yeah, it's cool. What is that about? It's pretty cool. That looks like something your gran had on her coffee table. <laughs> Look at that. Well, let's get that. Oops. All the bling. Crystal. Yeah, I know. Right. Ah, that is what I thought. What else? What else we got? I don't know. I feel quite flat for a Monday. Yeah, it's pretty breezy, isn't it? It's a bit cold. Yeah. One of them days. Should we go inside? Go on then. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in now. In. <laughs> yeah. I'm in now. Oh, uh, I've had exhaust turn up for a Jag. Other bits turn up. Rubbish to go in the back of the van. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> uh, let's have a walk down and see what the lads have got. Mitch is on with Dave's, that's him for a service and a brake fluid change. But we've found a few little bits. Oh, he put the wheel on. Uh, he's got a broken, I don't know if you can see it, Dav. No, can't see it. Uh, got a broken coil spring. Uh, and then, hello, Mitchell. Uh, brakes, hello. Are, brakes are worn out. It's his birthday today, say happy birthday, Mitch. Happy birthday, Mitch. <laughs> Oh, you're a funny Leave one. Leave a nice yeah. message in the comments. 30. That's it. Technically yeah. 30. Yeah. Downhill now. Nearly. Trying to get nearly as realistic as Carl. <laughs> you're nearly dead. That's what my kid yeah. would say. Yeah. Callum said that the other day. That's lovely, isn't it? I know. Yeah. Nearly dead. Thanks, mate. I'll do an arty angle on this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brakes worn out. Broken coil spring. Yeah. Um, and things. What else did you find? Where's your list? Uh, fuel cap strap is broken, so the strap from the fuel cap to the that loops it to the car is broken. Skirt or trim is broken. Uh, tire gels five years out of date. The battery cover is broken. Um, Lots of little jobs on this. Yeah, one. Yeah, some pads all around and a coil spring snapped. Yeah. So it's all right. Just little bits and pieces. Yeah. Uh, Matt is rebuilding the hydraulics off the Artronic unit. This one. So we've rebuilt the pump, changed the motor, rebuilt the accumulator and the pressure valve. And then we're going to change the seals on all solenoids, aren't we? Yeah. So you end up with a seal kit like this. All 
move the bit. All the gear and no idea. But that hangs on the side of the gearbox, look. Just down there. That's like the monkey out of Lion King. Now you've got to find that. <laughs> look down there. Down there. Okay. Uh, so then we pop solenoids out and we just change everything because it drives mint for an hour and then all of a sudden it'll pop up a fault and it's like a, um, uh, it's like a pressure fault. Right. Um, but the electric motors are a pain because they sit upright, they can get water in them and they can okay. get seized. So yeah, we'll pop that on. Carl's doing an oil pump on an RS6 and the less we say about that, the better, I think. <laughs> Ah, uh, Mr. Realism, how do we feel about this? Um, very realistic. <laughs> I think this is going to fix it. I think you're going to hold that and Thanks. I'm going home. Later, mate. We're going to fix it this time. We're going to fix it? Yeah. We're going to do it? I'm convinced. Yeah. We're Final RS6. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> well, we're only right. here because it's your failure so far. So you've got. <gasps> if I'd have fixed it the first time, exactly. That is how I we feel. wouldn't be in this situation. <laughs> that is how I feel. <laughs> we just keep trying. Yes. We just keep trying till we get it right. Oh. Let's have a quick look. There it is. Right. Right. Move on. So no, no. We'll go from the top. Go on. I've never been beaten by cars, and the two cars that have nearly beaten me are both on both site at the same, same time. time. Yeah. No, I will, I will win. I will win. Even if I lose money fixing it, I'll win. Yeah. Leave it overnight. Start the car, run it, hot, cold, whatever. Leave it overnight. Start it up the next day, it's fine. Drive it or leave it idling. Park it up, leave it two days and it starts like there's a hole in it and it smokes like there's a hole in the piston. And I do mean smokes. Yeah, not just a little bit. Like, yeah, not like a puff. Absolutely poor. Like, <laughs> someone's... Yeah, honestly. Uh, it's out of both banks, so it's out of both turbos. Or it's out of both... Not saying it's out of both turbos, it's out of both banks, because it's not an X-pipe, so they're two separate exhaust systems. And it smokes like... Uh, if it was oil in the cylinder, it would be gone. It would combust within the first two, three seconds and it'd be gone. But this doesn't. This goes for like 30, 40 seconds, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's oil in the exhaust. Um, if we then put it on a ramp and pull the turbo exit hoses off the bottom of the intercoolers, there's oil in those. So that says to me, it's backing up in the oil drains and then it's sat there. And because the turbo seals aren't seals, they're like piston rings, it leaks out of both sides of the turbos and it fills the compressor side and the turbine side with oil yeah so why is it backing up because there's a one-way valve in the oil pump well we've changed that didn't fix it we've changed the pressure control valves in the v didn't fix it we've it has had in its life three sets of turbos yeah. and we've just changed the turbos as well haven't we yeah um and then and honestly, it would be mint, mint, mint. Like the other week, it was weeks, wasn't it? Because we were driving yeah. it every it's not, day. It's not consistent, is it? Because we were driving it every day. It was mint and it never smoked. And then we left it a couple of days and it smoked. So we've started to figure out that it needs a couple of days to, for it to back up enough. So what I'm now starting to think is if the oil pump is not good enough to scavenge everything out the drains. And before people message, it has got the catch can on the right-hand turbo. So it has got that catch can. You've clean the drains, yeah, it's all clear. Yeah. done everything, and it's a smoke. It runs mint. No yeah. engine lights, no misfires, no nothing. Once it's cleared the smoke away, it is mint. But when it smokes... Yeah, it's like, like you said, it should, it should be obvious. Yeah, honestly. Like the, I've never seen a car smoke so oh, much yeah. and not like instantly be able to figure out what the problem was. Yeah. But. So, if anyone's got any ideas, let me know. We're going for oil pump. I would tell you how much that oil pump is. It starts with a four. Oh. And it's not 400. <laughs> and it's not 40. <laughs> but, and I sold it. So, on my head be it. Oh, God. Yep. Not what I said. <laughs> I and sell project cars, they said. Uh, it, yeah, it's like, it is what it is. So there's the reality of it as well. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is, this is what people sort of, 
uh, as much as we hate on RS sixes, they're a supercar engine stuffed in a saloon car. Mm -hmm. And if the part prices don't kill you, the labour involved in doing any of the fixes will kill you because it's well, we can do oil pump it just about in place. But I don't wanna. I don't want to anymore. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> they're, they're worse than alright. Like oh yeah, in, like running yeah, costs, yeah, yeah, working yeah, on them, yeah, yeah. just yeah. in general, like yeah, it will cost you more than an R8. But as we've said before, though, when they're good, they're amazing. Yeah. But this is the reality of it. Especially yeah, the this is them now. this is never real. Like, like when you put the story, because I looked after this car when I was in the old place when it was Tony's car, and I bought it off Tony when the gearbox went. And then we fixed that, and it wasn't bad, was it? It would smoke every now and again. And what we figured out was the longer you left it, the more it smoked. But now we just cannot find a reason that it's filling the turbos. It has to be filling the turbos because it's doing it out of both banks. There's no oil in the plenum. It's not valve stem seals, it is too much oil for valve stem seals, isn't it? Yeah, it's not piston rings because it's out of both banks, so if a pit, one piston had gone down, it wouldn't be that. So, yeah, 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 this one is doing my screwing, I think is the polite way to put it. Like you say, it'd be easier if it was one bank, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, I, like... feel, I feel like I've taken the mantle of uh, your realism today. You can be happy for a change. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. No, no, I'm just going <laughs> to sit in a corner and... Well, but... Fingers crossed, this is the, uh, <laughs> the final. Uh, oh, God. If not, I'm gonna have to, if not, I'm, yeah, yeah, I can't ask him to hold on anymore. George has been amazing. I'm going to have to buy it back off him, but I'd love him to be, I'd love to fix it and get him back in it, but yeah. it is what it is. It can't, I, like Tosh is, I am out of ideas. Mm. Yeah. There is nothing else to change. No, he's saying that I've been here, what, four or five years now? That RS6 and the Misfire on the V8 is yeah. probably the worst two cars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and the amount of cars you have in as well. Yeah. There's a lot of cars in there. We've, ne we've, always, we've always fixed them. Yeah. yeah. I can't think of a car we've, we haven't fixed. No. And I've got two at the minute now. Well, not necessarily we haven't fixed them, but two faults that have just made us proper scratch our heads. Yeah. So, any profit we have made is hereby lost. <laughs> Gonna go and cry in a corner. You're like, thanks. All right. It looks massive in my hands, it looks tiny in yours. Let's go. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Thanks. Realism. Uh, do you want to see? I've got a manual gearbox or an Artronic stripped if you want to see that. Yeah, How do we get past here, Carl? Uh, this is a manual, an Artronic gearbox uh, from Raviv in Israel that he sent over for us to convert for him. So we've stripped it, we've got to modify the back case, and we've got to change these shift forks because they're different um so i've got shift forks in order and then we change these their journal bearings mm. journal bearings and we change them for roller bearings to fit yeah. the new shafts so we've got to modify the two cases and then strip basically lift the two shafts out of the out of the holder yeah. put new shift forks in and then assemble it all back together is this something that you have requested fairly regularly or is it Yeah, we do quite a few of these. Yeah. So any manual conversion we do, we do this. Yeah. There's other people that don't do it our way. They uh, leave it in situ and pull the back case off and put sleeves inside the existing journals and stuff like that. But we do it this way. Cool. So we do a proper conversion. Um, so we'll get that back together, get all the select assembly back on, get it in a crate with the clutch pedal and the clutch lines and stuff like that and get it shipped back to him. Um, but obviously at the minute they're having problems over there. So whether it ever makes it back, yeah. um, as in how it works with customs and bits and pieces, I'm not too sure, but we'll, we'll figure that out and we yeah. figure it out. So. Yes, mate, uh, we know all about the DCT because we did that last week. Yep. I think that's about it in this corner, isn't it? I think it is. Right. Should we carefully move over? Let's kick else? something over. Right. I know. It is, that's how busy it is at the minute. That is how busy it is at the minute. It is just... I'm going to turn this off before I slip over. Ah. So, 
after Carl's just bummed me out with the RS6 talk, <laughs> I thought we'd answer some questions and cheer ourselves up. Let's do it. I know. <laughs> They seem to be helpful. I don't know who they help. Let us know if they're helping. Um, it's just letters. WQR5GNE1. Hi, Ricky. Thank you for answering my question about a bump start. I have another question. Can you remap an Artronic box to make it shift faster? If it's possible, are there any drawbacks? Ha <laughs> ha. Soapbox. Time to get my soapbox out. Here right. So an Artronic gearbox is a manual gearbox hydraulically controlled and how it works is what Matt's rebuilding at the minute is it's a fixed vessel of hydraulic pressure and it activates solenoids to engage uh, the selector. So where your hand would move forward backwards or left to right, it's, called, it's an S-cam system in that. Um, that's how it operates. So all the control unit is doing is activating solenoids. Now, people who sell bullshit on forums tell you, oh, plug this OBD dongle in and it's an Artronic map, load of shit. I don't see how an electronic signal or a hydraulic, you cannot make it shift any faster without changing the hydraulics and you can't, it's, it's a mechanically controlled hydraulic system. It's not electronically controlled yeah. because it's got a minimum pressure switch and a pressure relief valve. So it can, at 40 bar it charges and at 50 bar it blows off. So it's, sat, it's always sat between 40 and 50 bar hydraulic pressure. So all these people claiming they can change Artronic maps, uh, talking shit if you ask me. How you can change them is on the engine map. So how you let the engine roll out of torque and back into torque on the gear change is is achievable and you can do it that way so we do it with ignition so if you listen to ours after we've tuned them when you pull a gear it sounds like it goes into ignition retard so rather than it closing the throttle we try to do it with ignition but all these obd little flash dongles you get and you plug it in your obd port and you wait 30 seconds and your artronics mapped l l hokum load of crap all it's doing is this resetting the adaption values because if i plug Odis in or any of my factory tools and try to update the software on the TCU, it takes 20 to 30 minutes. Right. So it's not, it's not a flash, it's a load of... Sh so my answer always is on an Artronic, leave the gearbox alone because they already break shift forks anyway and then just go and get a TCU done. Uh, sorry, an ECU done, get an engine map done. Uh, Ian B. Hi Ricky, great channel, easy to watch. What's the easiest way to check if an R8 is being clocked? I've been told best ways with an OBD tool, but how expensive a tool do you need if it's true? Uh, Gen 1 is hard to clock and a Gen 2 is very easy to clock. So the only way to clock a Gen 1 is to manipulate what it says on the dash and normally you have to change the dash to do that. It's hard to, to manipulate the numbers in the dash. What's also hard is to see or there's no other control units to store the mileage. So it's only on the binnacle. On a Gen 2, it's easy to, there's CAN bus blockers. You can literally plug into OBD port and change it and change the mileage. So they're very easy to clock. I've locked your muff off, mate. Oh no. Lots of people clock them because they had mileage restrictions on finance agreements. So you take it out on finance and then they'd be like, oh yeah, you're only allowed to do 2,000 miles a year. And people have put canvas blockers in or get it, roll the mileage back um, to stay within their finance agreement. So that's normally why it happens. It's easy to find. The best way, the best thing to do for anyone who owns an R8 is just go and buy a VCDS cable. If give us a shout, we'll tell you where to get them from or what, whatever. Um, and then you can go into transmission and you can just go into measure value blocks and you can search for mileage and distance and it will tell you the mileage in the transmission. You can look in ABS and look at the mileage in ABS and then you can look at the mileage in the clocks and see if there's a disparity. So yeah, VC, it costs you a couple hundred quid. Uh, I don't know what the, like the Carly scanners and that are like, I've never tested on that, but I suppose it'd be a good one for us to try. We should have a go, yeah. definitely. And just to, to go over that again, I guess the same with Hurricane. Yeah, Hurricane and Gen yeah. 2 are the same yeah. architecture, yeah, so easy peasy. See so many of them that are clocked. Uh, SH1, hi Ricky, I want to buy an R8. Is there a way to know if a car has been tracked? And if so, will that mean the car is worn out? 
or can they handle being driven hard regularly? I have no idea how to find out whether a car has been looked after or treated poorly. Uh, let's break it down into two things. One, if you're going to spend that much money on a car, get it inspected, not necessarily by saying by us, but get it inspected by someone who knows the platform, knows the vehicle, knows what to look out for, uh, has got the diagnostics and will take covers off. The amount of cars we see that are inspected and nobody takes the covers off. So do that if you're going to buy a car. Track use. 99% uh, of people will never be able to use a car on track as hard as it can be driven. And what I mean by that is, at the end of the day, they're designed to be driven bloody hard. And on track, I don't think many people have got the driving ability to go and and do that. If you go and look at how I've raced my R6 all year, and then you go and look at Casey O'Gorman, who OMG put on their super sport bike this year, and you watch the two onboards, oh, mate, they're even at some places, like like when he raced at Donington, he was a second a bit quicker than me. How they ride them bikes is different to our, he's on the limiter everywhere. So the top, top level drivers drive a car completely different to a muggle. I wouldn't worry if it had been on track. My R8 had been on track. I just stayed on top of tyres, brakes and fluids. So if it had been on track, I wouldn't be worried too much. It's then questions like, has it been in the gravel? Is there chips on the disc? Is there chips on the wheels? Is the underside of the car all right? Um, has the fluids been changed? But a car being used on track wouldn't freak me out too much. The same rules apply. Was it looked after before and after the track day? Um, to make sure it was in good condition. Like. Um, but if you're thinking about buying a car, get it inspected, pay the money, don't go to the AA, they're rubbish. They haven't got a clue what they're looking at. They'll just put it up on a ramp, make sure nothing's leaking out the bottom of it. They'll tell you it's fine. And yeah, they don't, they, so don't get someone proper. Even if you go to Audi, even if you go to Audi and pay Audi to do an MPC, at least they've got an idea of what they're looking at. Um, I suppose the only other thing to add to that is there are lots of there are quite a few higher cars out there now as well, and um, experienced cars that yep. you've had in. Yeah, yeah. They get a hard life. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say experienced cars are way, way worse than well. Look at the state of some of the stuff Matt Armstrong's bought. Yeah. Because not fixing them properly is cheaper than fixing them properly. So a lot of these experienced cars just get badgered and butchered and bastardized and put back out yeah. for people to drive them. Um, so a track car owned by somebody who loves it is in way better condition normally. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't be, I wouldn't freak out too much about a track, something that's been used on track. Uh, Andy Begby, what championship are you riding in next year, Rick? Sorry, which championship will Kate let you ride in next year? Uh, hiya, Kate. Uh, I'll probably do NG again if it works, because obviously a business to run, the boys have football time you know time at home with the family it'd be nice to try and do a full season again it'd be nice to try and wild card at bsb but i know paul so paul curran uh who owns pcr or as we call justin bieber's chubby double so i've known paul for years and years and years um he runs pcr and he's also the boss of OMG, or and then Alan Gardner's the owner of OMG Racing, which has had Kyle and Ryan on this year. So uh, hopefully get to ride with them later in the year. And then if they're all, they've always supported me, so they've always looked after me. So all my bikes been built by them. Um, I wouldn't go anywhere else really. Paul's raced at a very very high level. He's fast. He is still fast, even though he's fat now. Um, he can drive, so he drove the Radical on our track day yes. last year, wasn't it? Bloody hell, yeah, it was last year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for a chubby lad, he does all right. Um, so <laughs> so hope, hopefully we'll try and do all of NG. I'm going to stay on a super sport bike. Um, I'm going to try and build a full-on super bike with OMG and we'll do something like that to show everybody how a super bike is built, but... That's in the pipeline yet. Yeah. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Al, why, question if I may, I really want a V10 RS6, but I've actually been put off by watching your content. Is an S8 5.2 equally as bad for repairs and common issues? Yes, they're worse. And I mean they're worse because they're not worth as much as a V10 RS6. So 
an S8 is probably what, seven to 10, and a V10 RS6 is probably 20 to 30. They're almost the same engine, but they require the same amount of work to do the same jobs. So if you've got to do Cambridge seals on an S8, you've still got a drop engine. If you've got to do anything on a gearbox, you've got a drop engine. So they're the same car, they have the similar problems, but one is worth three to four times the value of the other. So it's easier to spend the money on it to justify it out. If I come to you, well, I won't tell you what George's bill is on the white one, but if I come to an S8 owner who's bought it for 10 grand and I tell them their bill for taking the engine out to do coolant pipes and Cambridge seals and bits and pieces is six to seven grand, you're not spending 50% of the car fixing it. So if a V10 RS6 has put you off, don't buy an S8. Don't buy an S8. Um, there's a lot of good Audis there. And if you get a really good V10 RS6, you're mint. It's equally, if you get a really good S8, you're mint. But if you can't stomach the cost of fixing an RS6, you won't stomach the cost of fixing an S8. They're not that different. Would that be the same for an S6 as well, I guess? <sighs> yeah, because it's all the same. It's a supercar engine. Yep. There's no, di it's not like you just go, oh, it's an S, so it's like 50% cheaper on parts prices. They're all horrific. They're all 20 years old now, or 15 years old now. Do you know what I mean? You start looking now. What is the C7s? When did they come out? 14? Well, 13, 14. 10, 10 years there. old? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They have cam chain problems. They have turbo problems. So they drop spark plug tips. Don't listen to what I say and be terrified as to never buy a car again. All we ever see is the negatives. There are some really nice cars out there looked after by some really good people. But you've got to go away and do your homework. You can't sit there and go, all oh, right, a Golf, I own a Golf R at the minute. If I need a new turbo, it's 1,500 quid. Servicing it is 300 quid. It, it, yeah, it ain't happening. You need a pair of turbos on a C7 RS6, you're spending five grand. Yes. You know, you need to, well, the older stuff now, I just looked the other day, we're trying to rebuild a bottom end on a five litre Gallardo for someone. You can't buy rod bolts anymore. Can't get them. Rod bolts. No, nope, got to buy a complete set of rods. £2,800. Nothing wrong with the rods. I just want rod bolts. Yeah, obsolete. Don't exist. And that's the problem you're going to get now. It's probably the problem people in C5s are feeling. B6s. Is they're so old now, Audi are like, well, we haven't got to make parts for that anymore. So they'll start rolling out what parts they don't make. Yeah. 2008 RS6s, when they stop them? 2010? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're on for 13 years old. So I wouldn't say to not go and buy these cars, but it's very, very easy to get yourself into a mess. Yeah. And I am negative with cars anyway, because I'm miserable. <laughs> but it's so easy to buy a sh yeah. This is why when you look at, I would say if anyone's on about buying an RS6 right now, go and buy George's white one. Because whoever buys it will see what he's just spent to make sure it's right to sell. And that it is not an insignificant amount of money. It's ridiculous. Um, but he doesn't want to sell it knowing it's got a niggle or someone's going to say to him, oh, it needs this or it needs that. That car's fucking perfect. Yeah. So cars, mate, they're great fun. Uh, Jeff Hallimund. Uh, hi, I love your channel. One of my favorite channels on YouTube. Thanks, that, mate. I've got a question for the engine builder. Will a beast... RS4 B7 engine fit on a ZF eight-speed gearbox. I'd love to know your input. Honestly, mate, I would have no idea. Um, I would have no idea. I can't imagine it would simply because the B7 RS4 engine and the R8 V8 engine all took similar gearboxes in their architecture and an eight-speed ZF went on like, what, a C7. I can't say it would, but then I haven't checked, so it's hard for me to say yes or no. The other side of it is, if you're thinking of trying to put a ZF in a B7 RS4, there's a lot more to that than you think, because that gearbox needs a, a certain signals off other control units to make it work. So the gearbox now on any build is the most complicated thing. And we have this when, like, this is the argument I ha I'm not putting a DQ500 in Noble because I know the DQ500 needs 
the ABS to make it work right. It needs the gateway to make it work right. It needs certain signals off the engine control unit to make it work right. It needs a selector module. It needs a dash. And now all of a sudden I've turned my Noble into a TTRS. Yeah. It'll be the same on that. So it depends what you're gonna do. Yes, you could make it work. You could build adapters. Ryan at Darkside, they have just put some American straight American gearbox, I can't think of the name of it, on a V10 diesel and they just made an adapter plate. So yes, mechanically it can be done. Electronically, you might be painting yourself into a corner. So just depends what the project is. Uh, Graham Clifton, what's the ballpark figure for an engine rebuild on a B5 RS6 Avant? Basically, I'm looking for the car now and I would like to know what budget I need for a totally standard spec motor. Hmm, tough one. How long's a piece of string? is the honest answer. Uh, I, we normally quote engine builds as a minimum price. So I will say, right, from what you've said, if you want, so let's say rods, pistons are mint, cranks mint, blocks mint, heads don't need guides. So you just wanna put set of bearings, set of timing chains, set of rings, main bolts, head bolts, rod bolts. Uh, you're gonna keep the valves, you're gonna keep the valve springs although we'd normally always tell you to change valve springs, cut the seats, that would be a price. And then we'll, until it's spread across the bench and we can go, you need that, you need that, you need that. It's very, very hard to say. To give you an idea, a V10 build, if we haven't got to take it in and out and all that stuff, if I just take a V10 5.2 out of an R8 or Hurricane and I do a, re so a, a, there we go, a GT3 refresh, that's 12 grand plus of that. So that does include val valve springs, but that will be all the bearings, all the bolts, all the gaskets, all the seals, timing chains, valve springs, valve stem seals, a bit of machining work on the heads to cut the seats, and then labor to strip it, measure it, blueprint it, machine it, and build it. And that's an easy V10 build. Yeah. If I've got to do a five, point, a five liter where I've got to drop rods and pistons in it, or I've got to do a turbo build where I've got to put rods and si rods and pistons in it, or I've got a line of the block. You can get anywhere up to 30, being realistic. Um, so it's very, very hard to say how much your build is depending on, without knowing what, what you need. We can run through things for you, but to be honest, even a bit, even a stuff like we build, got McLarens, V10s, and some V8s out of our eights. So what have you got there? Two 720 blocks, 570 block, pair of V10 heads. Uh, I've got a V10 block over here. Um, I've got some 650 heads over there. Um, and we've still got one, two, 5.2s outside to build and another McLaren to build, which is the parts all down there sat on the floor ready for me to get out and measure. So to do a B5, if you've got to buy a car that needs an engine rebuild, that better be dirt cheap. Um, I wouldn't go buying a car that needs an engine rebuild, not unless it's like it's your car. I know it's immaculate and it's just got rod knock or something like yeah. that. Um, because that is a road to you taking a paste in financially. And if you pick the wrong person, uh, a bad experience. Yeah. Wow, that was just a page full of misery, wasn't it? <laughs> there uh, we go. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't buy those. I know, that was like the RS6 video. Do you remember when we did that? And everyone was like, wow, you, yeah, 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 wow, you were miserable in that. So, something positive to end on. <laughs>